I'm Miss Stephanie and I'm going to show you how to hook up a uh, rebreathing circuit to an anesthesia machine. Uh, first I want to show you where some of these things are located. Um, so we are in uh, the corner of the clinic next to the wet tables over here. We've got a little uh, label on here for anesthesia hoses. We've got a bunch of adapters here. Um, we have masks if we like for cat day we use masks or for exotics we'll stick a whole um, a whole uh, rodent rodent in here yeah and use that. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of bags, reservoir bags here to choose from. They have their sizes on them. Uh, so in here, I have my non-rebreathing circuits on top and then rebreathing circuits on the bottom. So as far as the rebreathing circuits go, I'm going to show you a couple. Did we take the Y circuit out? I'm gonna show you um, the two different types. So what we use here, these are known as F circuits. And I remember that because they actually kind of look like an F, right? It's like F. Um, these are nice because they have a tube inside of a tube essentially, right? So these are better than the Y circuit um, because as the animal um, exhales, it will actually help to continue to warm the air going into them so they don't get a bunch of cold air coming. Um, so that works really nice. There are two different diameters here. I don't know if you can see how one is a lot thinner than the other. Um, so that's green and blue. Um, our green is going to be for our smaller patients that would use a rebreathing circuit, um, and our blue will be for larger. There isn't a, an actual like math behind it. We've all just agreed that anywhere around 45 to 50 pounds go with the big one, and anything below that go with the medium size one. These again, of course, are for our animals that should be on a rebreather, which are animals greater than seven kilograms. Okay, So if they're seven kilograms, then the next question is, where do they fall in here? Are they only like 15 kilograms or are they more like 25 kilograms? <clears throat> so you'll pick one of those. You then need this little connector, right? Because um, hopefully you've already watched the parts portion of uh, the anesthesia machine videos, but I have one connection here. I need to be able to connect it to the other side. So that's what this guy's gonna help with. I also need to have a scavenger tube. So these are always gonna be blue. Um, and again, you should pick the appropriate diameter. These thinner ones are meant for the uh, non rebreathers. So I'm gonna pick the one that has a larger diameter to match. And there's just the one size for the rebreather. So just one of those. And again, it is the blue one. So I know that's my scavenger. Scavenger is always gonna be blue, much like oxygen will always be green. So you may see that in clinics. Some clinics that have active systems will have these blue tubes hanging down from their ceiling. Um, and so you'll know that's the scavengering system. All right, so I have my tubes that I need. Um, and now I need to pick out a bag. So I'm just gonna grab a two liter bag and a liter is the uh, unit of measurement for these bags. <clears throat> One quick note, please grab from this cabinet for the prep area. Surgery has their own circuit. If you see one of these circuits and it says surgery circuit on it over here, uh, it's in the wrong spot. It belongs in surgery. If you see hoses hanging here, this is where we hang them to dry, please do not pick from here. Many students immediately come to this area. They're hanging here because they're still wet and we don't want to use a wet circuit. If there are no more circuits left in here, then you can let an instructor know, hey, I think I have to use one of these and we'll, we'll show you a little trick on how to dry them appropriately. <clears throat> the last thing I wanna show you is if you need it, um, there are brand new F air canisters right here. So if the one on your machine is over the 50 grams from the uh, start of use, then you will go ahead and grab one of those. Okay, we're gonna come back over here to our machine. All right, my parts and pieces over here. So again, as I mentioned in the earlier video, the best, I, the best option, we're gonna pretend this guy's under 50 pounds. Um, you always wanna just follow your flow, right? Okay, so I've come over here, I've hooked it up to oxygen. So that's step one, right? Um, my oxygen comes in, uh, comes up, goes through my vaporizer and ends up here into my machine, all right. Inhalation and exhalation, they are labeled. Um, so make sure you feel comfortable with that. If for some reason they weren't, or you happen to work at a clinic that has an older one and you can't 
uh, and they're not actually labeled. Um, a neat little trick is look for your pop-off valve. Your pop-off valve, remember, is the door that closes the exit. And my exhalation is towards exit, right? So uh, your pop-off valve is always gonna be near your um, exhalation. So that's a little tricky, but they are labeled, <clears throat> here at least. Um, okay, so uh, this tube, this is what's going to actually go to the patient. So in our earlier video, we talked about you wanna make sure inhalation is going to the patient. So I wanna hook this tube here, not here, okay? I'm gonna hook this here. You do wanna really kind of wiggle these on as tight as possible. That's gonna prevent um, you having leaks when you do your pressure check. That's the first thing you're gonna check when you have a leak is how tightly you've um, connected everything before you start looking for an actual hole in the system. Um, so now again, I, need to, I do need to connect it to exhalation so that when they breathe out and come through here and get filtered. So that's what my little adapter is for. Again, nice and firmly. Catch it. Um, this can turn in any way. If it's in your way, you can always turn it up like this. It, it really doesn't matter, it's whatever. I like to have it kind of pointed down so this area is clear. Whatever you wanna do is totally fine. Um, make sure, you do wanna make sure it's not too overly kinked because this is a, a weak spot where you can end up with a leak if this is cracked in some way. <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna continue to follow my flow. So I have exhalation, it comes out, and then this is exit, okay? Scavenger, right? That's for exiting. This is gonna go to my F air canister. At this point in time, this is gonna remind me, oh, I need to weigh this, right? So I would weigh it. If it was over, I would get a new one. Either, um, if it's not over and I'm keeping it, remember, you're gonna write what did it weigh, what's the date, and, what you, uh, and put your initials so we know who to ask if there's an issue. Um, okay, so there's that, and then there's another guy right here in my flow that there should be no holes open, right, except for what's going to the patient. So I need something here and that's my bag. So again, if you follow your flow and maybe you forgot to grab something, maybe you forgot the bag over there, um, this is, you're gonna be here and you're gonna see, oh, I'm missing something, it's your bag. I'm gonna put our reservoir bag on there. You'll notice the alarm is, let me just discuss that. This, uh, sometimes you may see it in other clinics just like this, it has a little lip here so that you can ensure you put it tight enough. You wanna make sure you cover that. We attach this piece before our bag, and this goes to our alarm right here. So this alarm will go off when the machine has reached um, a dangerous pressure. So if it's gone, if it's reached 20 uh, centimeters of water, which um, our manometer will also tell us, uh, which is uh, a ma the maximum amount of pressure we want on the circuit, because remember, this equates to the pressure in the animal's lungs. All right, if we go over that 20 centimeters of water, uh, we can rupture their lungs. So this alarm will go off, just like that. It's very loud and annoying, to alert you uh, that you've gone over pressure. So we like to keep that here on the bag. This is the best place we found that we have the less leaks. <clears throat> Get nice and snug. Okay, so if you're like, ooh, I don't know, is everything set up? A couple things, uh, just kind of look through it, make sure all the, everything, again, the only opening should be this right here going to my patient. Everything else should be closed. So then you'll let your instructor know that you are ready for a pressure check um, and you're not going to be like, um, uh, Miss Jessica, can you come pressure check my machine with me? No, because you're the leader of the team. So you're going to say, Miss Jessica, I'm ready to pressure check my machine as soon as you're available. Um, and then one of us or whoever you ask will come over. <clears throat> okay, so pressure check. Um, what we're doing is we're closing the circuit with the pop-off valve, right? I'm, I'm closing this exit because right now if I turn this on, if I turn this oxygen on, I have oxygen coming out of here. If I cover this, which I'm gonna end up doing, um, and I try to fill my circuit, it won't go anywhere. It's just gonna keep, because I haven't closed the exit door yet, right? Everything is still exiting out through there. Um, so I'm gonna actually turn my oxygen off for a second. So what the goal is with my pressure check is I'm gonna close my pop-off valve and, and by doing that, close off my system, cover this end, because this is open too, right? And I'm gonna watch the pressure build. I'm gonna let it build up. We're actually gonna to go to 40-ish centimeters of water. Um, and I'm watching to see if my needle moves at all. Um, because if there are no leaks anywhere, if there's no cracks in this tube, if there's no holes in the bags, if everything is tight and there is no problem, then my needle shouldn't move at all. It should stay put where I leave it. <clears throat> so that's what we're gonna do. 
All right, um, with this machine, I am able to use my pressure, uh, excuse me, my oxygen flush valve to fill the machine. Um, you can do that with pretty much any machine on a rebreather. When we talk about the non-rebreather, we'll discuss how some machines you can't use this and you have to just turn oxygen on. Um, <clears throat> we'll talk about that during the non-rebreathing. So I'm not gonna actually turn oxygen on. I don't need that, I'm just gonna use my flush valve. But step one is close pop-off valve. This is the one and only time it is okay to remove your hand off of pop-off valve once you've closed it, is during a pressure check. You never, ever, ever remove your hand from this button when you close this when this is attached to a patient. That is how you forget, that is how you overinflate their lungs, and not many places have these alarms. Um, so I'm gonna close it and it's okay, I'm gonna let go because I do need my other hands. I got this nice and tight. I actually stick my finger kind of in it to get a nice tight seal. And I'm gonna go ahead and fill the alarm's gonna go off, I forgot about that. I'm gonna take the alarm off. 